Before we begin, I want to introduce NextGen to you and tell you a little bit about what we do. NextGen Shoals is a young professional organization in partnership with the Shoals Chamber of Commerce. Our mission is to find and foster the next generation of leaders in Shoals. We actively work to connect young people together in our area through networking events and provide opportunities for young people to gain new knowledge and skills through things like our Lunch and Learn series. We also work to actively engage young people in supporting our communities. In 2016, NextGen hosted the inaugural mayoral debates in Norton Auditorium. Not only was that event successful, we felt it was a necessary resource and opportunity for our communities to get to know the candidates running for leadership in their respective municipalities. We also felt that it was equally, if not more important now, to be able to bring these candidates running for office before the community. In light of COVID-19 and the challenges of this unprecedented time, we are proud to present these virtual mayoral forums. I'd like to thank the Shoals Chamber of Commerce, not only for their support with these forums, but for their continued support and encouragement of NextGen Shoals as a whole. We're excited to be a part of their Vote 2020 campaign. I'd also like to thank our NextGen board members for their efforts in organizing these events and their continued support of our community. All candidates who are listed on the ballot have been invited and asked to participate in tonight's forum. This evening will feature candidates from the city of Muscle Shoals. Mike Lockhart and Chelsea Kalchik. Denny McMillan, the third candidate on the ballot for mayor, has opted out of participating in tonight's event. Moderating tonight's forum is Dr. Butler Kane. Dr. Kane is chair and professor of the Department of Communications at the University of North Alabama. He received a PhD in Communication and Information Sciences with a focus in media history from the University of Alabama. Before transitioning into higher education, Dr. Kane spent many years working professionally as a broadcast journalist, including a decade as news director of Alabama Public Radio. He is a member of the Rotary Club of Florence and serves as chair of the North Alabama District 6860 Rotary Peace Fellowship Committee. Dr. Kane, thank you for joining us. I'm gonna turn it over to you now. Sarah Ann, thank you very much and good evening, everyone. The questions I will ask tonight have been submitted by the public and have been carefully selected by the Next Gen Board and a review committee. The questions have not been shared with the candidates or their aides prior to tonight's event. Each candidate will have two minutes to answer all questions this evening. If a rebuttal is requested, I will indicate the candidate who can offer a rebuttal and they will have 30 seconds to answer. Each candidate will have three rebuttals available to them tonight. Time will be kept strictly. The online platform used for tonight's debate will indicate when a candidate has 30 seconds remaining, 15 seconds remaining, and when time has run out. At that time, candidates will be allowed to finish their sentences. Also, this is a community event. All language and insinuations will need to be kept PG for the viewing audience. Next Gen Shoals has the right to cut off or remove any candidate who uses lewd, foul, or inappropriate language. Next Gen Shoals will be the sole party to determine what falls into these categories. Candidates, do each of you understand and agree to these rules tonight? Yes, thank, sir. Yes. Thank you. Candidates have been placed in random order to determine the sequence in which they answer the first question. After each question, the order for candidates to answer will rotate. The order for tonight's first question is as followed, Chelsea Kauchik and Mike Lockhart. And so the first question tonight, what are your priorities with respect to issues in this mayoral campaign? As mayor, what action will you take to enhance the quality of life for residents in your city and in the greater Shoals area? Ms. Kauchik, you're first. Well, thank you, Dr. Kane, and thank you, Next Gen Shoals, for putting on this uh, this great event. Um, what I want to start off with is to talk about servant leadership. So I've got a background uh, working as working as director of leadership Shoals and the youth, and youth leadership Shoals program at the Shoals Chamber of Commerce, and I want to bring that to the city of Muscle Shoals. And what I'd like to do, uh, if I am elected mayor, is to create a citywide branding campaign that's going to reflect our musical heritage that's not only going to talk about the, our history, but talk about our future and where we're headed. I also want to implement a citywide uh, a city planner to be able to go in and lay out our city and not, not just go in and just have city, have uh, businesses coming in like box top fast food restaurants and that sort of thing. I want us to have a city planner to lay out a five-year plan, a 10-year plan for that Wilson Dam corridor and create to create a community 
up Muscle Shoals. Um, I grew up in Florence, and when I moved over to Muscle Shoals, I had trouble getting to know people. And so one of the things I want us to do is create a location where we can have that community base. Uh, Florence, Tuscumbia, and Sheffield have that, but Muscle Shoals doesn't. So I want us to be able to have some centralized location where we can get together, get to know one another, and uh, really just take pride in our community. Another area I'd like to cover is to clean up our city. Uh, we have a, a bad litter problem. Uh, so I want us to be able to have a citywide cleanup and to implement a curbside recycling program to where we can bring in green businesses. We can have, when people come in to look at our area, they wanna relocate here because we take pride in our community. So that is something that I really wanna to bring to the table. And on top of all of that, it starts with communications. I want to bring communications, transparency, and accessibility to the mayoral office. Ms. Kalchik, thank you very much. Mr. Lockhart. Well, first of all, uh, Chelsea, I appreciate you participating tonight, and I'm looking forward to this. And I want to thank NextGen and the Shoals Chamber for putting on all of these events for the municipalities so that our, our voters can be uh, informed. Um, my platform is basically based on 27 years ago when I moved here. When, when my wife and I chose to Muscle Shells at home uh, 27 years ago, uh, we came here, I uh, went to work at Helen Keller Hospital, and the things that brought me here were the school system and business opportunity and quality of life. Uh, those priorities have not changed during that time. I could have continued to work for that, working in various areas of service for the city. I have uh, uh, been on a council for the last eight years um, and uh, been able to, to what I feel like has been a positive impact on our city through that. And that's what I want to continue to do uh, if elected as mayor. Um, business development is one of the top priorities that we have. Um, I'm going to continue to work with the CETA and their organization, uh, continue to develop, develop and grow that relationship I already have with them. Through our and grow our industrial park. We've had some great uh, decisions that have been made and some uh, some announcements that have been made and will be coming very soon out there. And uh, just exciting times with our industrial park and what we can do with them. Um, as far as the schools, uh, we want to continue to support our schools at a level and and grow them. Uh, we've got a top ten school system, and I want to continue to support that at a high level as we have. Uh, even before I became part of the of this municipal government. And then finally, in quality of life, uh, we've got a great recreation department. We have parks. We just created a amphitheater where we can begin to have some family events, movie time. So we are working to get that uh, more family events and things going in our city, and I'm looking forward to that. Mr. Lockhart, thank you very much. Our next question tonight. NextGen Shoals is a young professional organization. What efforts will your administration take to make Sheffield, or rather uh, the Greater Shoals area in Muscle Shoals, an attractive place for young people currently living here and also to bring in more young people? Mr. Lockhart, you get to answer first. Well, I, I think we're already seeing that. I, I know just recently um, the uh, Remote Shoals uh, program has brought a young couple. I, I, I haven't had an opportunity to meet them yet, but they're a young couple from from the Midwest that has just moved in here, and um, you know our school system is definitely an attraction for those young people. But we want to we want to open line of communication. We want to be able to bring those people to the table, and and sit down with them and 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 talk to them on what 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 is attractive to them. Uh, obviously, the vibe of the city is important for for that that group of people, and I want to make sure that uh, it's open and inviting for them. Um, but again, um, business development, which will also include, you know, not only industry, but commercial, retail, um, event type programs that, that attracts people into the area and makes people want to, to be here. And, uh, but we have a very accommodating city for young families. If you look around, when I've walked in streets and campaigning and I go through subdivisions, there are children playing, there are um, you know, families out on the port, front porch or in their driveway sharing, um, you know, an afternoon together. And that's what I'm seeing continue in this area. And I think that 
that's that speaks volumes for that uh, age group that you are speaking of in this question. Thank you. Mr. Lockhart, thank you. Ms. Kalchik. I can tell you that um, being a young person, I can tell you that uh, having a centralized location, like I mentioned earlier, to get to know other young people is very important. So that's something I'm definitely focused on is to have uh, avenues for people to get together, to get to know one another. Uh, another thing is for us to invest in broadband to make sure that everyone has access to broadband that's within our city limits. Um, I know with COVID going on right now, people, uh, parents are home with their kids and we have to make sure that everyone um, has access to be able to work at home and to be able to uh, do their schooling at home. So that's uh, that would be a priority of mom. I also want us to invest in entrepreneurship and to be able to let these small businesses are typically young families, uh, young pe or people with young kids. So I want us to be able to um, really invest in them coming here, create a one stop shop for them to be able to come in and uh, and be invited to our area, not so much just um, chain stores that are coming in. So um, I want an avenue to say, hey, you know, we've got a great school system, but there's so much more that we can add to that. I don't want it to just be about our school system. Yeah, that, that's our crowning jewel, but there's so much more jewels that we need to add to our crown to make that that full set. Um, I want us to be able to be that magic that people expect um, when they come to our community. We're known as the hit recording capital of the world, but we're not, we are not capitalizing on that right now. And a lot of families are drawn to that idea. And when they come here as visitors, we want them to stay. Like think about how many people want to come here and visit. And if we can capture them beyond just that first initial day when they're coming in and visiting a studio and say, wow, this is actually a really fantastic place to live and plenty of, to do for our families. Um, we're going to bring them in to live in our community and, and invest back in our city. Ms. Kalchik, thank you very much. Our next question for this evening. Some city critics have argued that homelessness, racism, lack of inclusion, and poverty have historically been swept under the rug as if they don't exist in Muscle Shoals. What's your take on that position, and what would be your plan to address the root causes of these issues? Ms. Kalchik, you get the question first. Okay, thank you. Um, well, at the Shoals Chamber, we did host an event where we had a speaker come in to talk about poverty and uh, how they address that in the city of Memphis. And I can tell you being in that room, Muscle Shoals was not present for that meeting. Um, I've been told that we don't have a homeless problem in Muscle Shoals. But then I spoke with our police department who said, hey, we're going over uh, to deal with homelessness all the time now. It's rising in our city and people are not recognizing it. So that's something that we have got to address as a city. Um, I actually helped co-create the Shoals Poverty Simulation where families, we, we created family units where people went in and said, this is what it's like to be a family of four making $24,000 a year in our community. This is what we go through every day trying to make ends meet. And especially with COVID, when people are losing their jobs, homelessness is on the rise. And it's here in Muscle Shoals, whether we want to admit it or not. It is here. Um, we have ways where we can grow as a city. We have got to accept everyone. When we take off our shoes and put, put on the shoes of someone else, that's how we learn um, how to address those needs. We can't close the door to them anymore. And uh, that's why I, I ask the voices of other people in our community. I'm going out to these areas that feel like they've been overlooked this whole time. And I, my campaign's about the sound of the people because I want their voices heard, not the ones that's been able to speak uh, for years and years in our past. I want their voices heard in our local government. We've got 20% minority in our community, but less than 5% serve on leadership roles. So that's something we have got to look at to be able to bring them to the table, not just put it out uh, on our website and say, hey, well, we asked and didn't have anyone respond. We have got to actively seek people to serve in leadership roles in minority districts. Thank you. Ms. Kaczyk, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Lockhart. Can I ask you to repeat that for me? Uh, yes. Um, the question is that uh, some city critics have argued that homelessness, racism, 
lack of inclusion, poverty have historically been swept under the rug in Muscle Shoals. And what's your take on that position and how would you address the root causes? Well, I, I, I do think that um, obviously, first of all, I think we've been blessed as a city to um, to have minimal uh, issues in all of those areas. But that's not to say it's not out there. And the main thing is if, if we address homelessness, um, what I have seen has been primarily they have come from other areas and we uh, but we need to be there for them. And, uh, you know, there's organizations that we can work with as a city to direct them to uh, churches. There are there are nonprofit organizations that we can assist them with. And I want to I want us to be on the forefront of being able to do that. Um, in regards to the climate of the environment of our country right now with with the racism, with uh, I hate, hate to say it, but it's hatred that we see throughout our country. One of the things we have to do is, you know, God says um, we should love one another as he loved us. And I, I want us to be able to sit down at the table. People want to be heard. They want to be valued. So we need to sit down together at that table and give everyone an opportunity to be heard. And, you know, I, I walked my life in my shoes. There are other people that are walking their lives in their shoes, and I do not know what they feel every day. And I need to be open to listen to what they deal with each day and have an open mind and understand them. We may not always agree on everything, but we can agree to disagree, and then we can make our, our city and our community a lot better. Thank you. Mr. Lockhart, thank you very much. Our next question for this evening, what leadership qualities do you bring to the table that will make you an effective mayor for the city of Muscle Shoals? Mr. Lockhart, you get this one first. Yeah. Well, I've been in management at the Helen Keller Hospital for 27 years. Um, during that time, uh, the last 19, I've managed multiple departments. I have managed um, um, through um, multi-million dollar budgets. I have to uh, facilitate staff um, daily operations. I have to uh, maintain um, our, um, our uh, profit and loss, trying to maintain that budget with integrity. Uh, I've done the same thing on our council for eight years. I've been on boards that have where I've been uh, involved and we've had to manage uh, nonprofit boards where we've had to manage very tight budgets before. Uh, but primarily the leadership I can bring in managing at Helen Keller for 27 years is the same that I will be transitioning to in um, my role as a mayor of the city of Muscle Shoals. Um, also, I feel like the strength I have in that is being a people person. I feel like um, that I uh, understand people. I'm a good listener, and we sit down and we work together. I want to. I want to. We've got a great city. We have a city that has uh, a team that works together. Each of our departments are awesome, and we want to make sure that um, we continue that and continue to grow. Um, that city, but I, my leadership skills and what I've done in the last 27 years at Keller, uh, managing multiple departments, large budgets, and day-to-day -day operations uh, is what I think can make me successful in that area. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Kalchik. I forgot to thank Mike, but thank you for, for participating too, Mike. I appreciate you being here with me. Um, I. I have been director of Leadership Shoals and Youth Leadership Shoals the past six years. Um, I, I was laid off a few months ago and pursued this, uh, this venture full time to run as mayor. Um, but in that time, I took a group of adults that were 30 adults that didn't know each other, put them in a room and said, let's create something great. Um, so they were bankers, they were large industry, they were small business, they were educators, they were from the medical profession and they all came together and we worked together as a team made wonderful friendships. And at the end, they created a community project that gave back to this community. So I did that with, um, with adults. And then I also took 45 juniors in high school, 
pretty daunting, right? So I took that and we, we did a nine month program with them where we did basically the same thing. We uh, put them together. They were all from different schools. Every single high school in our Shoals era was represented in that. And, um, and I directed that program as well. Uh, I believe in servant leadership. I believe in giving back. I believe in um, pushing from the back and, and letting others believe that they're in the front. And um, so that's the kind of leadership I want to bring to our community is having the team built, a team atmosphere built around. And Mike, Mike mentioned um, there is a, there's a great working team that we have right now in the city of Muscle Shoals. And I want to continue that. Um, and what I want to do is be able to um, pick people who have strengths to put them in the right roles to, to be able to give back the most effectively. Um, there might be someone who has a, a hidden talent that we don't know about, but I would love uh, as mayor to be able to do some type of strengths finder assessment to say, hey, this would be, as director, uh, you would be great if you focused on this area versus this area. Uh, so that's the kind of skills that I want to bring to the table is having that and also being director of um, Keep the Shoals Beautiful, managing budgets with that. Um, I have nonprofit experience running budgets uh, in that re regard as well. So I would love to bring that to the table as mayor. Ms. Kalchik, thank you. We will stay with you actually for this next question. Flooding has been a consistent issue for Muscle Shoals residents in recent years. What will your administration do to implement preventive measures to reduce loss from flooding and to provide resources to assist residents who have been affected by flooding? Ms. Kalchik. Well, I spoke with several residents who have dealt with this issue, and uh, it's not something new to Muscle Shoals by any means. Um, but what I hope to do is to be proactive versus reactive in that regard. Um, there's a lot of families that lost their homes in the last uh, unfortunate flood that we had in our area. But I want us to have a citywide flood mitigation pr uh, plan in place for us to be able to target these areas that are, that are high risk of flooding to go in and have a qualified civil engineering group that's going to go in and say, hey, these areas need to be addressed now and prioritize that and then put funding behind it. We've got to have the funding behind that to be able to address those issues. And um, that's, that's really my main goal is to have that plan in place moving forward. So when people come in and bring in new developments, we look and say, hey, how is this water that's running off? Is that going to affect the neighborhoods around us? You know, what's going to happen when we race this street a few inches? Is that going to affect this neighborhood right over here? Or how many pumps do we need in this retention pond to ensure that this pond is not going to overflow and, uh, and flood our neighboring communities? Uh, we've got to be proactive versus reactive. We know that flooding is an issue, so let's deal with the problems now, not later. Thank you. Mr. Lockhart. Um, <clears throat> yes. Um Flooding is an issue. I was in homes of individuals and the flooding, and it was a 200-year flood event. Um, and I was in those homes, and it definitely impacted those people, and uh, and and it it it, up, <clears throat> it turned their lives upside down. And but I want to talk about reactive versus proactive. Uh, our city began a a citywide flood mitigation program back in the 1990s. They have spent millions of dollars in this flood mitigation, building retention ponds, building um, pumps that uh, get water to flow out of those ponds. Um, what has happened is over time, <clears throat> excuse me, our footprint for our city has changed and it has grown. So back in the mid 2000s, we primarily had um, in the areas that had been identified, flood mitigation was under control. And we have Army Corps of Engineers that do routine inspections in our city now. So we have um, qualified, highly qualified people that come in and inspect our flood mitigation issues. Um, and then we have continued as uh, things were identified to, to reach out and start to work on those projects. What happened in, in two years ago when things started creeping back in was a 200 year flood event. And we have now been working to identify, to, to, uh, address those problems. We have put in uh, an additional pump in on Wilson Dam Road. There's been other things that that has allowed twice the flow out of that. We have a citywide uh, ARC plan coming out. Appalachian Regional Council is doing a citywide plan for flood identification, and then we're we're partnering with Carbert County 
on the southeast quadrant um, to to work on flood mitigation issues there. All those have been identified through the new footprint as we have grown to the southeast. So thank you. Mr. Lockhart, thank you. And we will stay with you uh, for this next question. Muscle Shoals is seeing significant population growth, and this growth is mirrored in its school system. What long-term plan would you implement as mayor to relieve overcrowding in Muscle Shoals schools, Mr. Lockhart? Well, obviously, there was um, there is an, an issue there uh, with uh, potential overcrowding and aging of schools. Um, that problem was identified, and um, you know there was a um, a tax vote for property taxes uh, two years ago. The public voted soundly that they did not want property taxes um, raised. So that's not an option. So we've got to think outside the box and begin to do more to, to help that and assist it as we can. Uh, I do need to mention that uh, it's my understanding that any property tax increase would have to be voted on by the public. So people that are talking about myself or somebody else going to raise taxes, that's not possible. The city, the voters of our city would have a input in that if it were to happen. So, uh, but what it comes down to is we've got to grow our city through other way, other means. We've got a business development to create additional revenue, grow our um, retail and commercial developments to create more uh, impact for them. But I will tell you this, our city um, school system is running at a, at a um, uh, cost per student, expense per student of $9,700 per year. Um, that in uh, relation to Florence, which is over $1,100 per year, I mean $11,000, ours is $9,700 a year and a few change. The, the, we're one top 10 school system that also competes with others that are at $13,000, $12,000 per student. We're efficient with our academic budget. We just need to find ways to be able to, um, to gain revenue to create uh, um, better financial uh, facilities. Thank you. Mr. Lockhart, thank you. Ms. Kalchik. Yeah. Well, I do believe there's a, you don't want to grow too fast. And that it seems like we're continuing to annex communities. And we've seen some issues with our city departments not being able to catch up with the employees that we have in place to serve our areas that we already have um, in our city limits. Uh, so what I would like for us to do is to slow that growth just a little bit so we can catch up. And um, like Mr. Lockhart said, there was a um, there was a tax vote in 2018 and it was a resounding no. 82 um, percent said no. But I don't believe it was because they didn't want our, our schools to grow. I believe it was because there's a lack of transparency between the city and the school system right now. Um, I don't think that people are just anti-tax. I have a kid that's seven years old in the school system. I want our schools to thrive and grow and be prosperous, but I would love for us to have a bigger focus on academics versus athletics. Um, athletics is great, but we've got a $10 million bond out there uh, where we used three, 3 million of it for the career tech, but we used $7.1 million of it for the athletics facility. So that's what people are not trusting in our city government is to say, Hey, if we give you this fund, we want us to we want to ensure that that money is going to be spent wisely and it's going to be earmarked for growth to be able to build our schools up, not necessarily just to go to one department. We want to be able to trust our city government and trust that the money that our taxpayers have are going to be used in a respectable and a way where we can trust them in the future. I want to bring back trust to our city hall and trust um, and give it back to the city to our people. Um, they deserve a voice. And uh, I feel like that tax was a way for them to just pigeonhole and say, hey, you know, we need this right now. Um, we we could have been done. I mean, Mr. Lockhart said, why didn't we fix the schools before we built the stadium? I'm not saying that we shouldn't have done that before we built the stadium. Should this be prioritized before the stadium? Maybe so. That's it should have. So. Thank you, Ms. Kalchik. We're going to stay on public education for the uh, next one, except uh, Mr. Lockhart, I think you would like to take advantage of one of your uh, your first rebuttal for tonight, please. Yes, please. Uh, 
I do understand her point on transparency, but that's kind of what I was trying to say with uh, they were uh, they were speaking of spending money frivolously. It's obvious with the data, data I gave you that our students are, and academically we're spending less than a lot of our competition. So um, that's that's the point I was trying to make there. And uh, that money that was spent went to three different sectors back in 2010, I believe. It was before I was on. It was um, back just as the transition was being made to, to my time on the council. And it was for the Career Academy, which has been a very big addition to us as far as uh, 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 development and uh, workforce readiness. And also there were some security, security measures placed in our school systems at that time with that money also. So, Thank you. And that is your time for rebuttal. Uh, the next question uh, stays, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we will continue to talk about public education here. Uh, what steps would you take as mayor to ensure that Muscle Shoals schools receive the investment they need for upkeep and improvements. Ms. Kalchik, you get this one first. Well, like I said, I have a seven year old in the school system. So I'm going to be in support of us being able to um, provide the resources that's needed for our schools. I would love to be able to look at the budget and see where money's being allocated now to see if we can reallocate that um, to fix some of the issues that we have in our, uh, in our kindergarten and our um, first and second grade. Um, so that's that's what I would love to look at is reallocation, not another tax. Ms. Kalchik, thank you. Mr. Lockhart. Um, well, I have already been in conversations with our, our new um, superintendent, Dr. Chad Holden, and we've had some conversations. Um, I haven't really talked about what opportunities we have. I will, I will promise you that I want to uh, continue to, to fund them with our line item that we have the same amount that we have done for, for years and continue to fund that at, at that level at least and and uh, work with the council to determine what we can do to support them um, as we move forward. Um, but we have got to work uh, as a partner with them in whatever we do and, and, and have an open line of communication there are opportunities for our citizens to, to, to have their voice heard. And I want to make sure we do it through City Hall. And I also want to make sure that, and I believe they will, Chad Holden and, and administration and board at the, at the school system will also do that moving forward. Mr. Lockhart, uh, thank you. Uh, we'll keep your microphone open because you get to uh, answer this next question. Would your administration implement a recycling program for Muscle Shoals? Well, there's currently a modified recycling program available now through Cobbert County that doesn't cost our citizens anything. Um, I am open to, to looking at that, but I, it is not a top priority, and I'll tell you why. Although recycling is very important, it is a cost factor, and it's very costly. Um, that was the issue, is my understanding, when they tried to do it before, uh, it became too costly, and either the citizens were going to have to bear some of the burden or they were going to have to discontinue it. There could be an option that uh, I know Florence does that if we would be able to maybe partner with them and maybe uh, look at an option there where it could be done reasonable uh, with, a, with a, a cost that could be um, fiscally, that we could be fiscally responsible with our uh, cost dollars. But uh, I think that. At this point, it's not the top priority, but certainly it's at a level where at some point we might need to look at that. But again, I will tell you there is availability for recycling in our city and it is being utilized. And, um, you know, that may be an option that we need to look at. And in, in the meantime, is can we expand the current um, program that we have to, to make it a little more feasible for our people? And then uh, as we work forward, be able to, to maybe. Uh, transition to something else if if it is cost effective. Thank you. Ms. Kalchik. Yes. Well, I've never been in favor of just saying it didn't work in the past, so let's not do it again. Um, we tried this about 20 years ago when recycling was just now just beginning to get its legs. And um, being a director of Keep the Shoals Beautiful, knowing the importance of what recycling is on our community, I can tell you that it has grown that 
people have wanted to use recycling more and more. If you if you uh, go out and ask people on social media now, hey, do you like recycling? Oh, yes, I love recycling. Would you use it if you had curbside recycling? Well, yes, I don't use it now because I don't want to pack everything into my little car and have my kids in the back seat in a car seat and try to drive and dump it into an area that's already overfilling with, with um recycled materials. So uh, the people that I've spoken with, and this has been overwhelming acceptance. Yes, I want a recycling program. I want a curbside recycling program. And again, yes, it costs money, but so does Parks and Rec. So does our school system. So does police. So does fire. But it's important to our community. People have spoken and they said that they want recycling and I want us to look at it. Um, I know that they've tried it in the past. I would love for us to look at a pilot program to go into a neighborhood and say, okay, here's uh, we're going to try this out for a month to see how you use it, to see how often you use it. I want us to have an educator to come in and say, here's the importance of recycling. Here's what you can recycle. Here's what you can't recycle. Let's take a look at it. Uh, I know China's not accepting plastics right now, but there are people now that are taking these one and two plastics and creating something awesome. So wouldn't it be great if we took our plastics and created something like nylon strings for guitars and, and stamped it made in Muscle Shoals? We can create something new here in Muscle Shoals. We've just got to think outside the box on this. Thank you. Our next question for both of you this evening. What do you see as the future for Cypress Lakes Golf Course? Supporters uh, have said it's an important property when it comes to increasing home values for adjacent properties and that it also provides an important quality of life feature, but its operations are a city expenditure. Ms. Kalchik, you get to answer this first. Uh, like I said, there's expenditures that we that we still see as a quality of life situation. So I'm in favor of us keeping Cypress Lake Golf Course open. Uh, we definitely don't want that to go away when we've got families, neighborhoods, uh, or people built up in that in that golf course area. People are using it; they're enjoying it. One thing I want us to do, though, is to invest in a marketing plan to make sure they're successful. Um, I know we're we're bleeding in cost over there, but why are we really investing in a in creating tournaments and having people come in and do we have a restaurant there for people to eat? I know we cut all of that, but you can't cut the legs off and expect it to continue to walk. So we've got to do something to make sure that that golf course is viable. If you look at Robert Trent Jones, they're creating programs all the time to have people to come in to visit and tour there. What are we doing at Cypress Lakes? We've got to do better. We've got to staff it better. And then we can take a look at the cost after we try that avenue, but we can't just go ahead and cut the legs off and then say, well, we're losing money. Let's, let's go ahead and kill it. So I'm in favor of us being able to invest in a marketing plan to make sure that that golf course is successful for the families and businesses that are surrounding that and uh, make sure that it continues to be a great quality of life uh, factor in our city. Ms. Kalchik, thank you. Mr. Lockhart. Uh, yes, I'm definitely in favor of continuing the operation of the golf course. Uh, it's, it's, it's a added value to the quality of life of our community. Um, we have already begun to, to, to work on some plans to, um, to uh, think outside the box over there. We've just remodeled to create an event center over there. Uh, unfortunately, it uh, was finished just prior to COVID, so we haven't had a, a lot of opportunities to utilize that, but it's a, it's a great looking. It'll seat up to about 300 people for a, a dinner or, or an event that you would want over there. We have had some um, wedding and rehearsal events type things there so that's that's one way that we've already started marketing um, if you look around nationally um, it, golf courses struggle to operate in the black period so you you try to minimize your expenses and operate um, continue to provide, provide a good quality product and that's what we'll continue to do um, make sure we have resources over and it's not just the golf course it's the tennis courts it's a, um, a workout center and it's a, a swim pool area. So it, it is a quality of life opportunity for uh, our citizens and, and it's available to them uh, in our center city. And, and another thing is I believe it's also part of our dis business development opportunity. So uh, it's, it's critical to maintain, uh, to be maintained as part of our city and be maintained at a high level. Thank you. Mr. Lockhart, thank you very much. Our next question for both of you. 
What plans do you have for increasing small business investment in Muscle Shoals? And without a traditional downtown area, what are ways that you would work to foster that growth? Mr. Lockhart, you get this one first. Well, first of all, let me tell you that I have uh, already reached out to some developers. I have some ideas for a, um, a town center type environment, uh, but it needs to be, um, you've got to find property owners and developers that will um, can agree on an area for that. And, and there are some opportunities for that. And I think it can happen and I hope to see it happen. Um, but uh, as far as small businesses, uh, I want us to be a, fall, a small business friendly city. Um, I want us to look at opportunities. I want to work with our council to look at opportunities to, to um, provide incentives for small businesses like we do for our uh, big box opportunities. Now it won't be the same, it'll look different, but I think we can think outside the box and make that happen. Uh, we've got some really viable small businesses in our, in our community that have been here a long time. Uh, I've talked with quite a few small business owners that have managed to work through uh, this pandemic and, and some are struggling. So we need to, to find ways to work with them to help um, um, them stay afloat and get through this time. But going forward, they're a vital aspect, but that small business aspect also uh, will grow and prosper as we grow business development and industry because then they will come in and spend the money. Thank you. Mr. Lockhart, thank you. Ms. Kalchik. Yeah, we need strategic plan and we need a city planner. We need someone that comes in that has experience in business that can lay out our city and bring in these retail businesses. Uh, no more no more chains. Um, I've spoken with some business owners in Muscle Shoals and they've actually asked for incentives to be able to help grow their business. And they were told by leadership that, no, you're not a chain, we can't give it to you. So that's one of the areas that I want us to invest in because small business owners give back tenfold. If you spend $7 in a small business in that, or $10 in a business, you get $7 back put back into that community if you're a small business. These chains that we're bringing in are not staying and they're not staying because they're losing money. And uh, these corporations, especially during COVID, they're, they're closing stores left and right. They don't care about us. They don't care about Muscle Shoals. They probably don't even know where we are. Uh, we have got to invest in people that are gonna give back to our community. So I want us to have a city planner that's got experience in uh, laying out a city, having a plan moving forward uh, so we're no longer just getting contacted by express oils or payday loans or dollar generals and saying, hey, yeah, sure, come set up shop here. I want us to have a plan, and we've got to do that by having someone that's experienced in laying out the city. We don't have a downtown, but we can create it. In Madison, they're already doing that, and we can do that in Muscle Shoals. I would love for us to go down Wilson Dam Corridor and have a sign that says, downtown Muscle Shoals to your left, and we'll move downtown, and we'll find a spot for them. But we've got to have that community feel, and like I said, that's going to bring in your young people, that's going to bring in people to our community that want to learn about our music musical heritage, because I would love to coin that the hit recording capital of the world town center, something that's going to be a nod to our music industry and be magical uh, to people that come to visit here. So city planner, um, and then had, being able to locate those uh, businesses that have been uh, shuttered to be able to go in and update those and know where those locations are to pinpoint those. So when people contact us wanting to come here, we know exactly where we can send them uh, in, our, in our city to take a look at. Ms. Kalchik, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Lockhart, you have requested your second rebuttal of the night. You have 30 seconds. Yes, sir. I, I I would like to say that uh, I understand the chain issue, but during this pandemic, uh, we have maintained our sales tax revenues at uh, a level at or above one year ago. And part of that is because of many of these chains that we do have. Small business are suffering a little bit and I understand that and we're trying to work with them and I wanna work with them. But I was in a, a uh, meeting, a Zoom meeting, where it listed the top, top 20, um, chains that were flourishing during this time, eight of those are located in Muscle Shoals, Alabama. So if we don't have that, then we're cutting services. We're losing employees. We have done none of that during. Oh, 
Mr. Lockhart, that is your time. Thank you. And Ms. Kauchik, you're requesting your first rebuttal of the night. You have 30 seconds. I'm certainly not saying that we need to get rid of Walmart. I mean, people love to shop there. Um, so I'm not saying that those chains need to go away, but I do want us to take a focus on small business moving forward. Um, we've lost some really good businesses to bring in chains to our community, one of them being the, the donut shop. So um, that's something that's notoriously known uh, for the city to be able to bring in these chains and not really be invested in our small businesses. But I want that to change. Uh, thank you both uh, for your responses to that question. Our next question. The Shoals is a vibrant, interconnected area consisting of four main cities. As mayor of Muscle Shoals, what steps would you take to build working relationships with the other three municipalities? Ms. Kauchik, this one goes to you first. Uh, yes, I, I would love for us to have a mayor's council for us to be able to sit down and speak with other mayors. And and I do know that the, the mayors are in constant communication now. And uh, so I know that they're speaking about certain issues, but I want it to be a regular meeting uh, where they get together, including the councils. I would love for the councils to have some type of quarterly get together to say, hey, what are you working on? Because uh, when you when you work inside your box, you don't really uh, get to see the full picture. Uh, so there are ways for us to really uh, grow when we when we look at ourselves as a region. Uh, I do believe that um, that we're not um, we have got to work stronger together. Uh, we've got to quit being so territorial in our practices. Um, we've got to celebrate when uh, when Florence gets a new industry, and of course. I'm, the other cities celebrated when we uh, we announced that we're going to have a large uh, auto supplier in, in the city of Muscle Shoals. That's great for our region. Um, that's going to bring in people from all over. So um, there are ways for us to work together as a region. Working at the Shoals Chamber of Commerce, we looked at it like that. We didn't see these city lines. Um, I do know that uh, when people come to our community, they don't see those lines either. So we've got to quit pretending like um, we're drawing those lines out and, and that whatever progress they have over on that side is not good for us. Um, we've got to be in constant communication with these cities to be able to, to gather and harness new ideas for us to grow together as a region. Ms. Kalchik, thank you. Mr. Lockhart. Uh, I have to agree with uh, Ms. Kalchik on this uh, um, question. Um, I think we have to be willing to collaborate and work together and not just the mayors, but also our councils because they, in essence, are uh, are the ones that come to the table and make the final decisions on, on a lot of our, our issues. So uh, we do need to come together and work together. Um, I'll give you an example. The Walgreen Call Center in Muscle Shoals, center city of Muscle Shoals, right in, in, in the old Southgate Mall, came here and uh, when they expanded over 500 employees um, back in uh, uh, probably 14, 16, um, there were about half and half, half of the employees employed there were from our three counties, uh, Carver County, Franklin County, and Lawrence County. And then the other half were from Lauderdale County. And so, you know, and I would venture to say that it's the same with North America Lighting. It's the same with others. So when, when, when one city has a win, it's a win for our entire community and our entire region. And we need to work it and, and we need to uh, promote business development as a, um, as a region. We have to because of where the resources are and work together to make that happen. Thank you. Mr. Lockhart, thank you. Our, our next question for both of you. Muscle Shoals elected and appointed officials lack diversity. What would you do as mayor to actively seek out diverse voices when it comes to policies, municipal boards, and civic engagement, specifically with regard to age, gender, race, and sexual orientation? Mr. Lockhart, you get this question first. Well, first of all, I think it goes, it comes back to being, having an open line of communications. Uh, we need to be inviting and welcoming to all um, people. And we need to have a table that is available for everybody. We need to be able to sit at that table and talk to one another, regardless of race, gender, um, socioeconomic, um, um, uh, area, region, or I mean, socioeconomic level. Uh, we need to all be able to come to that table and sit down and talk 
and be comfortable and know that you are valued and you are heard and you have an opportunity to serve in some capacity in our city. And we want to encourage that. If that table gets too small, then we just bring in more chairs and we want to make that happen. I, I, we have always had an open policy for applications. Uh, we don't get a lot of applications for diversity. And I just had a conversation today with someone about that. Um, uh, typically, the stereotypical type of person comes in and applies for those same positions. But I will tell you, uh, we recently, on our city school board, the last uh, appointment we made was a female uh, minority. And I'm happy to say that she was very well qualified and she will do a good job. And we will continue to work to do that and find qualified people uh, of all uh, aspects and work together to, to try to promote that. Thank you. Mr. Lockhart, thank you. Ms. Kalchik. Uh, I'll kind of echo what, uh, what Mike said about sitting at the table, but I also want to go further and say invite them to the table. So not necessarily expect that they already have a place, but to actively go out and say, hey, come to the table, sit down, let's have a chat. Um, like I said, 20% of our uh, community is minority, but only less than 5% serve in leadership roles. We've had one minority uh, serve on city council. We've had zero females serve on city council. We've never had a female mayor uh, since 1992. And uh, let's make a change on that. Uh, I think that when we have more voices invited to the table, we can have different perspectives, new ideas on things, uh, but we've got to expand that circle. We can't just look and say, hey, Joe, do you know, uh, you have a friend over here that might be good for this and, and bring them on in. Um, it seems like, Typically what happens on boards is people get invited because they know somebody. Um, so if you expand that and, and bring in more voices into that leadership role to be able to make decisions of the people that appoint those members to the boards, they'll have different circles for us to be able to pull from. But they've got to know that they're invited to the table and it starts with com uh, communication and conversations to actually uh, get in your car, drive up to these streets that you've never been to, get out, sit down and talk to somebody. And that's what my, my campaign's been about. And that's what I will continue to do as mayor is to continue to listen to people who are different from me because that's how we learn and grow. Ms. Kalchik, thank you very much. Uh, we will stay with you for this next question. If elected mayor, what would your administration plan to do to improve the economic development and vitality of the Muscle Shoals city and area? Yeah. Well, thank, thankfully, we. Thankfully, we have a very strong um, industrial development group. Um, CETA and the Shoals Chamber work great to be able to uh, help recruit business. And um, thankfully, through the work with CETA, we were able to uh, have that auto supplier come to our area. So I'll continue. Um, as mayor, I would serve on the SIDC board, which is the funding mechanism for that to be able to bring in industry. Uh, so that's something that, you know, I would serve um, just by default as being the mayor of the city. But what I'd also like to do is create that marketing plan to be able to push us out to these businesses. Um, I know that when industries come in, they want to have a tour of our area. So I want us to have a set plan of saying, hey, when you come to our city, these are the things we want you to see. This is what you want to want you to do um, because it is a quality of life issue too. I mean, these people want to set up shop. They, they want to have, they want to know that there's places uh, to go and eat and things to see and do. It's not necessarily just a, I'm going to set my plant here. And um, you know, the fact that your city looks like it's a little trashy and we need to clean that up, that doesn't affect me. Like people look at that stuff. So uh, we've got to look at our overall image as a city uh, be able to enhance that and then um, work closely with CETA, with the Shoals Chamber of Commerce to be able to recruit in those businesses. And we've got to represent ourselves as a region. Again, um, the city of Muscle Shoals with our population now, we're 47th in the state as far as population data. But if we represent ourselves as a region, as a metropolitan statistical area, that makes us seventh in the state. So that's going to be able to bring in those big fish to our area, um, like that tier one or tier one auto supplier that we have now. Ms. Kalchik, thank you very much. Mr. Lockhart. Well, let me take a moment to uh, tout uh, CETA and Kevin Jackson. Um, I've had an opportunity to sit down with him and, and have some conversation with him in the last few months. And he's, 
very valuable. He's very knowledgeable of economic development. And not only, not only that, he's got a background in retail, and which also could, could benefit us as we move forward. But let me just tell you a little story about us competing in Muscle Shoals and the Shoals area um, for jobs like we just recruited. The foresight of CETA to build a spec building and make it available allows us to compete with larger metropolitan areas that are near interstates and may be more accessible. But this company that's coming in here needed to start and start soon. And one of the advantages that gave us was having a spec building ready, even though they're going to have to expand it. So, you know, my hat's off to the CETA board and Kevin for his leadership um, because their foresight has given us an opportunity to land 279 jobs in a tier one um, uh, business and industry. And, um, you know, you look back, uh, he went out, they recruited someone to purchase uh, a, an existing business with uh, 130 something employees that we saved in that same industrial park just a month earlier than that. So, you know, relationships are important. They're, they're important, important at that level. I also have begun to develop relationships at the state and federal level um, due to some of my uh, committees that I'm on in, in, at, in the legal municipalities, both at the state and national level. And relationships are key to building and growing industrial development. Thank you. Mr. Lockhart, thank you very much. Uh, candidates, this will be our last question for the evening. And Mr. Lockhart, you will answer this one first. What qualifies you to be mayor of Muscle Shoals and why should, should the community trust you to lead? Well, like I said, I've got 27 years of managed experience in, uh, uh, at, at Helen Keller Hospital. I've, I've managed multiple departments. I, um, I uh, have, have had the responsibility for uh, managing uh, large budgets and creating budgets and, and working through those and making sure that those departments are fiscally responsible. I have been responsible for as many as 100 employees working right underneath me at one time. Uh, uh, and it has consistently been between 60 and 100 for the last 19 years. And uh, depending on uh, sometimes department responsibilities may shift around a little bit. Um, in addition to that, um, relationships. I feel like I've grown relationships in this community through the years that has established a trust factor. Um, my, when I decided to run for mayor, my wife and I prayed about this for, for some time. That door stayed open. And on the day, actually the day before I announced, I cannot tell you the, the, the support of so many people that came out that I haven't even talked to in, in quite some time, years, and said, hey, you've got our support. We want you there. We believe in you. And um, there's not a better testimony than the people who have witnessed your life. And, and, and I'm, I, I'm normally a humble person, but this, this has just been an outpouring of support of people that said, because of your testimony, because of your experience, because of your results that you have had, we, we feel like you are the one to be successful. And that's why I feel like I'm running. And, and I have passion for this city. I have a great job where I am now. It's not about leading, leaving this job or needing another job. It's, it's about a passion to serve our city and, and see us continue to move it forward as we have for the years previous. And I look forward to doing that. And I look forward to working alongside our citizens to make that happen. Thank you. Mr. Lockhart, thank you. Ms. Kalchik. Yeah, um, I believe what makes me a strong candidate is strategy, communication, and vision. So strategy and being, um, when, I, when we've done a personality assessment test and we've done that, uh, the Strengths Finder assessment, the Clifton Strengths Finder assessment in leadership, time and time again, I've come up, strategy is my number one. So I'm not looking at something and saying, let's address this issue that we have right now. I'm looking at it and say, how can we make sure that this problem doesn't come up again in the future? Let's look all the way back here and let's work backwards to be able to have a plan. I, want, I am a planner by nature. Um, I look way far in advance and say, here's how we can get to this point where we want to be. Um, and vision is another thing. So uh, again, that's the strategy in me is to be able to look forward and say, let, who do we want to be in the future? And I ask Muscle Shoals uh, community right now, 
who do we want to be in the future? Are we okay with where we are right now or are there ways where we can grow? And uh, I hope I can be that candidate for them is to be able to look forward and not necessarily uh, be fine with where we are. Um, another thing is communication. So I believe that uh, you're only as strong as the team that you build around you and the people that you surround yourself with. And I believe in creating a strong team. I don't promise to know every single answer that someone's going to ask me, but I will know the people who are going to have the answers and they're going to be the ones that are going to do the research to come back to me and say, hey, maybe let's, let's look at this avenue. Maybe we should do this differently. Um, I want to be able to put in trust in, in our team uh, atmosphere in our city moving forward. Um, but leadership, I, I, I mean, I teach leadership. I've had six years uh, in leadership shows where I'm cultivating these leaders, uh, young leaders and adult leaders. And, and I hope to be able to lead this, lead this city forward because um, the vision, the leadership, the communication, um, get the whole package, plus I'm a cool chick. So I'll end at that. Ms. Couchy, thank you very much. And to both of our candidates tonight, thank you both for your participation tonight. We appreciate it. And thank you to NextGen Shoals for planning this event. Local elections are August 25th. Polls are open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Be sure you know your polling place and be sure to go out and vote. Thank you and have a great evening, everyone.